Hi everyone, Tinkercat here, and in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to wire up your robot and show you how to navigate your VEX V5 brain and controller. Also, if you guys do enjoy, please consider subscribing. It helps me out. Enjoy the video. So you will have three different sized wires. The longest will be for the claw of your robot, the middle for the arm of your robot, and finally, your three smallest wires will be for your two driving motors and your radio. For a demo, I will show you how to connect the middle length wire because it is easiest to see. Take the end of the wire and just pop it into the motor until you hear a nice soft click. If you want to double check, you can lightly pull on the wire and it shouldn't come out. This means you've done it correctly. To plug it into the brain, it actually doesn't matter which port you plug it into as it can be configured later. That is one wire done. Now it is up to you where you want to plug in the rest of the wires. Now in your kit, there should have been a bag of zip ties that came with it. We will use this to secure the wires to the robot. We do this because if we don't, the wires may drag on the ground, another robot could accidentally get a hold of your wires and pull them out, or they could get caught on something that you, as you drive by. If you don't have zip ties, twist ties can work too. To prevent wires, from getting snagged, we will roll up the wires and attach them to the structure of the robot, something like this. Now as a pro tip, when fixing your wires on a moving part, make sure you will leave enough wiggle room for the bot to still move freely. Now before we move on, if you ever want to take out a wire from either the brain or one of the motors, there's a small tab you will need to press and hold in order to pull out the wire. Now it's time to plug in your battery. The battery wire will look something like what you see. It will have four prongs on each side that will plug into the brain and battery. I attempted to flip the robot so you guys could see better, but it didn't help much. So that's why you see me struggle for a little right there. Anyway, the four prong part that you will be plugging in will be on the bottom left part of the brain. This will then connect to the battery also on the bottom, which is also hard to see. Sorry about that. Once you guys have done that, you guys are ready to bring your robot to life. First, we have to pair the brain and controller together and get them to connect wirelessly. In order to do this, unplug any wire from a motor and plug it into the controller. In this case, I will use a claw motor since it's the easiest to access. Plug the wire into the right slot on the controller and turn on the brain. In the top right corner of both your controller and brain, there will be a status bar telling you if the brain and controller are connected. You will then select the language you will be using, and in this case, English. Now click on the settings and click on the bottom left option. This will allow you to change the type of connection. Click on the radio type option and select yes. Then you are free to unplug the wire from the controller and back into the motor. It should now be paired. If it gives you a red screen on your controller, don't panic. It will take a few seconds for your robot to pair. Oh. 
Also, as a visual from far away, the radio will start flashing rapidly. This means you are connected. Don't forget to plug in all your wires after. Now moving on to the interface of your brain. Let's get a close up and learn how to navigate your brain. When you first turn on your brain, you are given five options. Let's go through them one by one. In programs, this is where your files will be uploaded off of the computer after coding what you want the robot to do. There are eight slots to choose from. In VEX, this is where I'll show you how to drive your robot even before there are any programs. In this folder, there is one option saying Clawbot. If you click it, it will take you to a default screen used every time you want to make the robot move. Let's dissect this. When you click on wiring, it will take you to what the robot thinks you preset. If they are not the same, go ahead and match them to what you to what you see on your brain. The numbers on the side allow you to scroll to set more motors up if you wanted to. In controls, you are given four different options on the top. This is already preset in the VEX folder as a way to drive your robot. Let's go through them. So in the option that says left, this is where you will only use the left joystick to drive the robot. The next option is dual drive, which is also commonly known as tank drive. The third option is split control, also commonly known as arcade drive. This setting is mostly used if you have mechanum wheels. Here's a picture if you don't know what it is. And finally, the fourth option is the right drive, where you only use the right joystick to drive. Controller 1 map will show you what the robot has already preset for you on the controller. The controller 2 map is the same thing but if you had a second controller. When competing, there's an option to add a second driver so you're not overwhelmed by doing all the driving and operating by yourself. Under motors, this just allows you to change the direction in which the motor is going. Run and timed run options allow you to actually put the robot in motion if you move the controller. After you connected your controller and brain together, turn the controller on. If you click run on the brain or the controller, it will start the program. The robot won't move right away until you push one of the buttons or move the joystick. Now I won't push the buttons or try to move the joystick because it will probably break the camera that's right over it. Pressing the stop button will stop the program and put the robot to rest. Timed run is the same way except that you can put a time limit on it. Okay, so settings. This is if you want to change any specifics like to change the language if you might have misclicked in the beginning, display lighting or theme, or to go in and change the radio type. I'll let you guys explore the rest. In devices, this is where the brain identifies what is plugged into the different numbered ports. You can click on each of these options as and look at the status of the parts. Now onto drive. When you press on the option, it will take you to the into the default screen we saw last time when in the VEX folder. This is basically the same. Alright, let's go over to the controller. When you turn it on, you will have three options when you first see it. Clicking the A button on the controller will select the option. So when we click on run, it will take us to three options. To scroll, use the arrow keys on the left to move to different options. Run and timed run will just start the robot. Competition will only be used when you're at an actual competition with the VexNet competition switch. So I forgot and attempted to click the power button to go back, but only realized that you have to click the B button to go back. 
Now this part is programs. This is where you will find programs you uploaded from the computer. We haven't coded yet, so there will be nothing. And finally, under settings, you can change the language, calibrate your joysticks, and change the type of connection you have to the robot. Hey guys, congrats! You made it to the end of the video. I hope this was helpful to you and learned from it. If you guys enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and remember, be creative!